Now we're going to Myanmar now, where the junta has started drafting civilians to fight in its military as it tries to squash persistent efforts by pro-democracy and armed ethnic resistance groups to overthrow it. The military took power in a coup in 2021 and imprisoned the country's former democratically elected leader, Aung San Suu Kyi. Conflict has been brewing since, and the resistance movement has been gaining momentum. The junta has now passed a law that forces all men between 18 and 35 and all women between 18 and 27 to serve at least two years in the armed forces. The law will come into effect in April and it's pushing thousands to flee the country. Many of them are heading to neighboring Thailand, but they are not necessarily safe there either. DW's Asia Pacific Bureau Chief Georg Mattis met a group of men now living in a safe house in the Thai city of Maesot. They cross the border at a place like this. The casinos on the Burmese side of the river almost give enough light to navigate by and make it into Thailand. Five young men recently came here this way. One of them calls himself Ang Se. He prefers to remain anonymous to protect his family back home from arrest. He's fled the draft, risking five years in prison and a fine if caught. I don't want to fight my own people. The military is killing people, arresting people. I was arrested as well for no reason and spent a few months in an overcrowded jail. When I heard about the draft, I decided to run. Tens of thousands of Burmese are already in Thailand. As the compulsory draft looms, increasing numbers of young people are coming. Driven by fear of their own military, which are in charge back home, and put Aung San Suu Kyi in prison. People are being snatched on the streets and forcibly recruited. Young people like us are afraid they might be kidnapped by the military. Rich people have sent their children abroad or paid bribes to get them off the lists. They got out of Myanmar at this official border crossing into Mesot, Thailand, even though officials monitor men of fighting age trying to leave. Paul Greening, a former senior UN officer, says the junta's introduction of conscription reflects its recent losses against a coalition of resistance movements on the battlefield. He says the resistance is rapidly gaining ground, but warns of what might happen if they take power. The military victory will overtake the political development. And that's what I'm worried about. If that happens and there's not agreements in place, the draft constitution agreed and things like this, there could be internal conflict. At the moment, they're fighting together and there's unity. They're a common enemy. When common enemy is gone, there's old animosities, egos, personalities. This could come up again unless we have systems in place. The young men who have just fled their country suggest opposition to the military government is so strong that forcing people to fight for them will have the opposite effect. If the situation back home gets worse, I will go and join the resistance forces. I think it was a mistake of the junta to introduce this draft law. For now they'll stay here in Thailand, in this safe house provided by an NGO. They can only hope for peace and political change on the other side of the border river. Well, joining me now for more on this is Dr. Anna Plunkett, a lecturer in international relations at the Department of War Studies at King's College uh, London. Anna, we've seen um, conflict in Myanmar since the military junta seized power three years ago. Help us understand the situation a bit better. Who's fighting who and what for? So at the time of the coup, we had an environment where Myanmar was already at war. Uh, Myanmar's already had uh, 60 years worth of civil conflict um, with many insurgent groups in the borderlands looking for succession from the state. So we already have a great situation of conflict. And then in 2021, when the Mahunta took power, a new pro-democracy movement began, or an old pro-democracy movement began um, and re-established itself, I should say. Um, and so we have this movement that has grown over the last three years. Um, and over over the last couple of months, we've seen that unify under the 1027 movement where we saw ethnic armed insurgents move with the pro-democracy forces and take over large swathes of land in kind of northern and central Myanmar. 
Now, does the resistance movement have any chance of succeeding in their efforts to overthrow the military government? I think if we look historically, uh, we can see the long-standing and sustained nature of the Myanmar military when it has faced opposition, both from insurgency and from pro-democracy forces. However, what is different about what we're seeing in the last few years is the effectiveness of the alliances that have been built um, in opposition to the hunter um, it outside. And so we see this movement and a kind of national movement towards a an alternative from military leadership but also from within the movement it's um, the military itself we're seeing much higher levels of um defection from the ground forces and also much more critique from the higher-ups in the military itself and so this could be a time of change uh, for the military but there is a, this is not easily won and there's a significant chance this will just lead to more fighting even if the military isn't in control of the country mm. anymore and now, do you expect, uh, how do you expect this planned conscription uh, to affect things? You've mentioned desertion. And will this uh, turn things into the junta's favour? Are too many people actually fleeing? I mean, I think it has the big issue the military has right now, which is that it's stretched extremely thin. Unlike other years, other times when we've seen the military fighting one or two insurgent forces or engaging in one kind of action, it's currently engaging in conflict zones across the country um, and in central areas where it has historically had large levels of support and control, which it no longer has. And so we can see the limitations of it in the engagement of this conscription law, which has had for a very long time, but has only enacted this year. Um, and I think what we can see here is you know what was made out in the report which is there is this concern that actually with the amount of people fleeing we're pushing what the conscription law is doing is pushing people to fight for the opposition and to fight for pro-democracy movements rather than support the military and even if they did support the military and, and came into the army what training and what support would they have to really fulfill the gaps the military are facing in the, the movements it has right now now, Amir Masuta has repeatedly pledged to hold new elections. Do you think this will happen anytime soon or ever? So I think we've had some very conflicting statements over the last week. We've had one that said that the elections are going ahead, which is in a kind of bastion point that the uh, interim government that's currently in control in Myanmar have made, and um, that there will be elections in the future, and they've, they've made that statement that this will happen. However, they've also made a statement that if elections were to happen, they would not be nationwide. Now, I think this is not an unusual thing. Many of the people in Myanmar's conflict zones have not experienced elections, have not been able to engage in elections in the past anyways. However, the scale of the violence in Myanmar right now, the escalations we're seeing, the controversies that Myanmar military are taking, I think we can say very clearly that there is not scope to run elections right now, and any elections that were being run would be heavily critiqued. Um, and I think if we were to go ahead, it would be extremely limited in nature and would unlikely resolve any of the crises the Myanmar military or the Myanmar country itself are facing right now. Dr Anna Planka there from King's College London. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to welcome Sain Vin, a Burmese journalist in exile to the show. Uh, we have now seen three years of conflict in Myanmar since the military junta seized power. In your view, at this point, how big is the resistance movement? The resistance movement is gaining momentum and they are, are in, have, they have been increasing holding of a territory, white strip of land and capture nearly half of the uh, Tamadol's military camps. And uh, out of the 469 towns in Myanmar, the resistance for anti-junta forces have been captured 50 towns. So, and they have been at large at gaining the momentum. And are we seeing more collaboration uh, between ethnic minority groups uh, in Myanmar and the pro-democracy movement? Have, have we seen them increasingly joining forces here? Of course. And uh, if you look at the uh, Burmese uh, uh, structure, and, uh, uh, in terms of uh, hard power structure, the military, Itamaro, and democratic force, and, uh, and ethnic minority, and throughout the history, Tamadol and the democratic forces are somehow more aligned and when it comes to the federal lenses and other political issues. But after the coup, it has changed dramatically. The democratic forces and the ethnic minority, which has been, they have been fighting for decades 
for their autonomy, for their self determinations, and you know, oh, that. And now these two groups have been in terms of uh, unity and the collaboration, cooperation are getting more and more. And we heard in our report uh, concerns that these ethnic groups, which, as you say, have decades of differences and conflict, concerns about what would happen uh, if they were able to, to take power uh, together. How concerned are you about infighting breaking out among this cohort? This is just a wishful thinking. You know, they are not stupid. And they know that uh, they need to be unity. They can afford to miss this golden opportunity, a chance that may not come again. You know, so discussions, informal talks are going on, and uh, uh, so concerning the transitional government. What I could see is the modified version of the current opposition, national unity government. If they have asked the SAC in the Nebido. Hmm. Now I'm also curious uh, in this environment. With, with low morale, with people uh, fleeing the country because they do not want to take part uh, in military service. How much do you think that this will weaken the junta? Uh, throughout the Bamish Tamadol history, this is the first time ever they face such huge threat against them, especially among the group, uh, among the majority Burman, of course, they, they, they were, and uh, they had a threat in 1948 and the 50s and somehow, uh, but particularly from ethnic minority resistance forces. But now, now what happened is the from Burman group, that has never been before. So, uh, the, uh, also the Tamarod, and uh, due to the corruptions, and uh, the, even though they are in 38, 38, 39, something in the high military ranking and, and in global status, but they are not that uh, powerful. They, they became a, a paper tiger. Uh, so that, that the ground forces, they don't want to fight. They just want to leave out. And the, the, also oh, the public, it uh, dislike it's, uh, too much to them. That is the first time ever in uh, Myanmar history. Well, thank you so much for joining us on DW News today. That is journalist uh, St. Vin. We really appreciate your time. Thank you.